Welcome to Podcast 1-4 Angles. First, drawing an angle and what are its parts. To draw an angle is to actually draw a ray. As you can see here, we have one ray in this direction, then using the same end point, another ray, and those two rays make an angle. The parts of this angle, that particular point where they're joined, the end point of the ray, is called a vertex. And this ray is considered a side of the angle. So an angle is a vertex point and two sides made of those rays. Whoops, there we go. That angle now takes this plane and subdivides it into an interior part and an exterior part. So, an angle. Two rays joined at the common endpoint, creating two sides, interior, exterior. Naming an angle. There are three methods to naming an angle. We can use the names of the points that are created when we draw the angle. So this particular angle can have the angle name of angle, that's the angle symbol, and we use this point first, the vertex point second, and the other point third. So angle A, B, C. Again, this is the vertex point. And options are to reverse the letters. Angle C, B, A. C, B, A or A, B, C. But if we list B first, if we were to say angle B, A, C, that would imply that A is the corner, and A is not the corner of this point. So this is not the name of this angle. A second method for naming this angle is to just use the vertex point. Since there's only one angle where B is the corner of the vertex, then we can say this is angle B. But if we should have other points here at B, then this might be confusing. For example, there might be several angles emanating out of B as the vertex point. And perhaps we have this is D, and this is E. And if we were to say angle B, then this would be rather confusing. Which one of these angles would be angle B? So again, if there's only one angle at this vertex, then a single letter name is appropriate. Several angles at that corner, then this is inappropriate. And then we'd have to go back to the three letter name like ABC or angle ABD and the list goes on and on ABD and so forth because the three letter name can be cumbersome if I wanted to name just this particular angle angle ABD I could use a number system so instead of saying angle ABD I could say angle 1 and that would clarify exactly which angle I mean. The angle where 1 is wedged in to the interior near the vertex. So in this picture we have an angle 1, we have an angle 2, we have an angle 3, but this system will not work for larger angles in this same picture. So if I was trying to name this particular angle, the blue one, then we do not call it angle 1, 2 or angle 1 plus 2. That's not appropriate. This doesn't work. So here we would have to use a three letter system like angle A, B, E. And that would name this bluish angle A, B, E. So we have a three letter system, we have a number system, and if there's only one angle at this particular corner, we could use a single letter as an angle B. Just like segments have length, angles have a measure. An angle measure is based on the idea of a circle. The circle, of course, is 360 degrees, so an angle would chop off, if you will, a portion of that 360 degrees. If all the way around is 360 degrees, how much of the circle did this angle chop off? And we can use instruments such as a protractor and lining up the vertex with that center point of the protractor and then taking that protractor excuse me and then taking that protractor 
and wheeling it around to line up a zero point like this. And then we can read this and it's rather small but it's approximately 39 degrees. Here's a sketch pad activity in which you can try to guess the size of the angle. If all the way around is 360 degrees, then how much is, say, that? Well, we certainly get into some common points like this is approximately 180, and angle measures, yes, can be bigger than 180, but can you estimate? Can you guess? Not bad. Guess again. Very good. So, angles have measure. Now that we've established angles have size, it's possible for several angles to have the same size. So, if two angles have the same size, we use the word congruent. And to mark that visually, we put a little curve, kind of like the portion of the circle that was chopped off by that angle. If this is, say, angle A and this is angle B, then we would say that angle A is congruent to angle B. But if we wanted to talk about the size of these angles, like this was, oh, approximately, what do you think, class? Let's say it's 30 degrees. That would make this one 30 degrees. So instead of just saying that they're 30 degrees, we could say the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle B because they're both 30 degrees. So again, with congruence, objects are congruent, their measurements are equal. It's possible to cut that measurement in half, so if something were to go down the center of that angle, we'd say that that was the bisector of this angle. So what was 30 degrees might now be two 15 degree angles. So an angle bisector is any object that goes down the middle or cuts the angle in half. As in a previous lesson with segment addition postulate, we also have angle addition postulate. So given the following situation, a point Q is in the interior of an angle. Interior doesn't mean necessarily the middle, can be anywhere in the interior. So here is Q, and by connecting S to Q, creating another ray, we've created several angles. These angles have measure, and now we can say that one angle, RSQ, plus a second angle adjacent to it, QST, will equal yet a larger angle, RST. And with angle addition postulate comes the ultimate word problem involving algebra and geometry. So let's go through the appropriate steps for doing a word problem. Step one, read. So. After we've read the problem carefully, let's diagram this question. So let's start over. C is in the interior of angle A, Q, B. Now, putting in the given information, A, Q, C is 40 degrees. A, Q, C, 40 degrees. Now, mine doesn't look like 40 degrees, but it's just a relative thing. This angle is 40 degrees. C, Q, B is X. This will be an unknown degree. A, Q, B, the entire picture, 2x plus 10. Now that we see a diagram, we can relate it to what we just learned, the angle addition postulate. That is the measure of angle AQC plus the measure of angle CQB will equal the larger angle, the measure of angle AQB. So by substituting the information we have into that, we'll get the equation. 40 plus x will equal AQB, the larger angle, 2x plus 10. Writing the equation now brings us to solving the equation and a little bit of algebra moving the x to this side and the 10, I'm out of room. You could do this on your own piece of paper. That's going to give us x on this side and 30 on that side. But did we actually answer the question? We've solved the equation. Let's verify that we answered the question. The question is, find the measure of AQB. Well, AQB is 2x plus 10. So let's take this answer, 30, place it back into the problem, and what is twice 30 plus 10? And the answer now is going to be 
twice 30 plus 10 or 70. Verifying that I've done this correctly. Read carefully, diagram, equation, solve, and verify. Thus concludes the lesson 1-4 angles. Thank you very much.